This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. It's a beautiful day though. My equipment is all the way in the corner over there, so. All right, we've got a no cooling call. We've got an energy management system and it looks like we should be first and second stage calling and the fan calling and it's 81 degrees in their kitchen so we're gonna jump up and check everything out. So this is like crazy but we gotta use a huge ladder to get up top and then we'll get up to an air handler up top. I am on like a, I think it's a 12 foot ladder or maybe a 16 foot ladder, I don't know. but. Uh, you get on top of the walk-ins, and then uh, there's an air handler way over there, so we'll get to it. Okay. So, let's see, there's lots of construction mess up here. The electrical lines vibrating. It's kind of annoying. All right. Um, this is my air handler right here. So I'm gonna start here, and then we'll get up onto the roof where the condensed unit is. But we're just gonna start here and see if we have a call for fan and all that fancy stuff. So these are heat pump units and the line sets are like 75 to 100 foot long, it's insane. So I just wanted to start down on the ground. My liquid lines are cold, so I don't think, uh, there might be something running on that one. That one's not cold, but that one is cold. So, as in not running in heat mode, but. Yeah, no, no cold suction lines either. Indoor blower motors running. To be honest with you, just knowing the sounds, it kind of sounds like it's not running on second stage right now, but we'll figure that out. Um, but this is what I'm more concerned with. We have no cooling or heating going on, but there's oil everywhere. That's all oil. So we definitely have a leak here somewhere. Yeah, there's oil on all these lines. There's oil right there. There's oil all in here, but yeah, we got to get up onto the roof. But I'm gonna open this up and see if second stage on the fan is calling because this is a two-speed blower with a VFD, and when it um, when it's on first stage, the motor will make a whining like VFD noise, like it's doing right now, um, which makes me think we're not running on second stage. One thing that really sucks is when I take that panel off, the motor's you know running higher current draw or higher amps and I worry that it's gonna trip the VFD, but I just gotta hurry up and get my meter out, check for second stage. All right, so it looks like we're good. So between C, common, and G, we should have 24 volts. That's my normal call for fan. And then between C and Y2, that's what puts it into full speed for the, for the um, second speed, basically. And we have a call to Y2. So that means we're calling for second stage. So, okay, we're gonna button this up and then jump up onto the roof. Good gosh, I'm out of shape. Um, I already walked up two flights of stairs. And then, we got that. Uh, I mean, while I appreciate my veto bag, something like this is pretty heavy, but it's gonna be nice when I have everything on the roof, so. Um, I brought some refrigerant. I have it tied off on a rope. That way I can pull it up, because um, I have a feeling I'm gonna need to add gas. Again, just thinking about it so I don't have to make multiple trips because this is such a chore to get up under their roof. Again, I'm extremely out of breath, but all right. Pull up the refrigerant. It's a beautiful day though. My equipment is all the way in the corner over there. So, bunch of heat pump units. This big stuff, these boxcar units are all for a movie theater that we don't service, so it's just a common roof. All right, so. My equipment right here. Condenser fan motors are all running. The frame rate messes it up, but it is running properly and it's all cold air. So we need to open up the control section and figure out what's going on. So all my line sets come over there, go down that giant chase, and then go down that all the way down to the ground floor. So it's quite a ways down. These line sets are super long. All right, um, we've got Compressors back here, and uh, nothing's running, only the condenser fan motors. We come up here, uh, we have comfort alert, little modules right here, and we're getting a three beep safety, or three flash, on both of them. And if we look right in here, it says three flashes due to short cycling. 
which would make sense because I saw that oil. So I'm pretty confident we're gonna be low on charge. Um, I certainly imagine it's probably really low on charge though. So we'll have to see, let me put my gauges on it. To reset these, what I did, so that way I didn't have to go all the way down to the thermostats, is just disconnected 24 volts going to the protector for 30 seconds and plugged it back in. Now it's giving me the red flash, which means anti-short cycle delay. So it should start up here in just a minute, and then we will, um, uh, you know, diagnose. I, I got my stuff on the first stage compressor, and I will say something that I know uh, just from experience that the first and second stage compressor are miswired and swapped. So I'm actually on actually no i'm on the second stage compressor right now because uh, they swapped them when they did installation of every one of these units i know that for a fact so um i better jump on the first stage actually to get it right the first stage is the other side well no i take that back yeah i should be on the second stage because that's technically the first stage because when they install these units they swap the lines so right now i'm on compressor one at the unit it says down there compressor two is over there um, again I'm probably confusing the hell out of you guys but compressor two is actually first stage so I need to be on compressor two both sight glasses are violently flashing so this is the second stage and the first stage is right there that one's violently flashing too so okay a sight glass on an air conditioning system is a great indicator of a gross undercharge meaning that it's severely low in refrigerant a clear sight glass, it's not like on a refrigeration system. A clear sight glass doesn't mean full charge on an air conditioning system, okay? Um, but, uh, so we need to start by clearing the sight glass and then adding refrigerant per subcooling after following the charging chart. All right. Measure quick going over here. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little refrigerant. Um, I'm hooked up to another suction port. I'll add refrigerant that way and we'll see if we can't get this thing uh, at least one stage running because I don't have enough gas for both of them, I'm sure. Um, then we gotta go down and find the leaks too, but we're at least gonna put some gas in there and get it up and running nice and good. All right, so we are not too bad, but we are above the curve. And if you don't know how to read these charts, whenever your dot is above the curve, you add. Whenever it's below, you remove. Okay, I don't know why they don't write that on here, but so we are above not bad but we're going to go ahead and add some charge and get it back closer to the curve well that's interesting oh, okay there we go yeah the sight glass is both just cleared up i'm going to give it a few more minutes of running before i add any gas that's very interesting it is also peculiar that it would be short cycling when it's only just barely above the curve so right now we're running about five, six degrees subcooling. That's not horrendous. So we're gonna watch it for a few minutes before I add any gas. It's possible we had another issue. They did just have an energy management system installed on these units. Um, and I guess it's always possible that they were running without the indoor blower motor. That would cause them to short cycle too. So, huh, interesting, we'll have to see. All right, so I'm fairly confident that the refrigerant leak that we know is downstairs because there's oil is not the problem here because um both of these are not bad they're low but they're not bad we're running eight degrees sub cooling on the next stage right now and according to this chart so i i added my estimates is a pound or two to the um what would be the first stage so i started right here on the chart above the curve and then i got right on the curve about 12 degrees sub cooling, I think is what it ended up at. And on this one right here, we're basically almost the same, just above the curve. Um, so I'm taking a gamble here because it's such a difficult task to get up on the roof. Now that I'm up here, I'm starting to question whether or not that indoor blower motor is running at full speed right now, which would mess with our numbers a little bit, but I'm pretty confident it is. So I'm taking a gamble here and going ahead and topping off the charge. Um, I am gonna have to go back into that uh, attic and do something to prove whether it be pull the cover so I can see the VFD or something. I have an idea maybe pulling the second stage wire and listening to it ramp down. But uh, we gotta do something to prove that it is running on full speed right now. 
Um, but anyways, I'm going to continue just because it's such a chore. And being the, the, the length and distance, I can't get smart probes. Nothing will make it this far because you're talking crazy distances. So um, I'm just going to continue with adding charge and getting on the curve. And then we'll go downstairs and prove that we're blowing uh, the proper amount of air. Go figure. Right when I packed my stuff up, the unit actually satisfied. Yeah, so I'm kind of curious because this unit right here, I'm going to open it up and check it out. They didn't ask me to look at this one, but this one's blowing cold out the condenser fan motors too. It makes me wonder if that one is off on air or two. So this is not, this is the other unit, same thing. No compressors running. Now, um, I'm not going to gauge up and stuff on this one because I don't have a work order for this, but I'm going to go ahead and reset the lockouts and see if it stays running. It's kind of crazy. It makes me wonder if this is uh, like the energy management company screwing up or something. Ooh, so yeah, this one's saying short cycle on both too. But look at that. That looks healthy and safe. This is 480 volt. I bet you that makes a nice spark when that thing turns on. That's kind of sketch for sure. And that is line voltage. That's shady. I'm almost afraid to put this panel back on. We're going to have to tell them about that and see if they want to issue a work order. This is a dining room AC and we're in the middle of this virus. So they can't have people in the dining room anyway. So I don't know if they want to fix this, but that's scary looking. I love this Klein hook. I keep an extra long rope. I want to say it's 75 feet long, if I remember right. And then this way, I could just lower stuff down. So my Vito tool backpack's already down there, and I don't got to go down with you know all this crap on my back. So get you one of these hooks. I love them. It's just made by Klein. I got it from my local supplier. You can find them on Amazon or whatever. I'll throw an Amazon link in the video show notes. But these things are awesome. All right, it's not going to translate well on video, but I can tell that. The unit is satisfied it's cool in the kitchen now and the vfd noise or the inverter noise coming from the motor right because it's reducing the frequency it makes like a high pitch whining noise it has gotten louder so um i'm just making some uh educated guesses here that this thing is uh running on first stage uh fan speed right now and then earlier it was running on two speed or two stage fan Okay, so this thing looks like crud down here, but I'm not really picking up any leaks. I'm using the DTEC Select. Not over here, but it is corroded really bad. So, alright, that's it for that. You guys have worked on these carrier split system commercial ones. They're a nightmare getting the filters to stay in. I ended up having to tape the filters as I went along so that way they didn't fall out. That way they're at least holding together. I still got to go on the other side and put the plastic bracket in, but looking good so far. All right, there is leaks all in here. I, this leak detector, there's so many leaks, the leak detector is kind of useless. They're just everywhere. So we're going to have to bubble this guy and then just start counting. Uh, this is going to be one of those situations where you're just going to fix what you can. And we're not going to do it today, but we're just going to try to identify as many as possible. Okay, so I soaped this guy up. So there's so many leaks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's some in the back too. There's at least nine, I count 10. And then there's some in the back that I can't even zoom in on. So at least 10 leaks. This unit has two stages. So this thing has leaks everywhere. Just, I mean, you could just see it bubbling like crazy. There's stuff everywhere on this, that's crazy. Just how many spots are bubbling? Where do you even start? I mean, changing this evaporator is gonna be the biggest nightmare in the world, but I mean, I just have a feeling you go to braze one of these and the other ones are just gonna pop up. You might as well just re-braze every single weld in this thing, but holy moly, getting this evaporator out up in this attic, I guess we could pull it out from the top. But good grief, this job alone is gonna take freaking so many man hours. All right, so I'm thinking the best way, there's so many leaks, I'm afraid, I, I count 13 so far. And they're just popping up everywhere. Mind you too, guys, I don't know if I told you, but this is a heat pump. So this thing does get high pressure when it goes into the heating mode. Um, yeah, this is crazy. Just how many, I mean, every one of these distribution tubes is leaking. All this is leaking. All these distribution tubes. And then there's leaks in the back. 
the bottom corner's bubbling out something. I mean, there's just stuff everywhere. So I'm thinking the easiest way to change this evaporator is to pull the top off and lift the evaporator out through the top, but it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Luckily, this bracket right here is bolted on. So we can take this off and the evaporator hopefully would slide right out the top. But getting it up here and everything, I mean, that's their, we'd have to, I mean, it's gonna be a whole process getting it up through, through yeah. It's gonna be a thing, but it will give me an opportunity to change this drain pan, so that's a plus. Oh boy, so yeah, that's my air handler over there. It's gonna be interesting, changing that coil, man. Holy moly. This ductwork's probably gonna come out, probably take that apart. And then that gives us access on top. Might even have to move some ceiling grid wires. I'm gonna probably have to have them, have someone come out and remove the ceiling grid in a couple places so we can do this because getting it up here, that coil is gonna be heavy. I don't know, man. I just don't know if I can, if it's worth just trying to fix it. We might just give it a shot, do a bunch of braze jobs on it and just warn them like, hey, I don't know if this is gonna work, but the alternative is a lot of money. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll recover the charge, fix it, and then do all that. But yeah, this is all the way over here. I mean, it's just really tight up on top of this walk-in. As far as getting up, I think we might be able to get it up here. Just gonna be a chore. We'll have to see what the weight is. What started as a service call for a kitchen AC, initially I thought it was gonna be a refrigerant issue. Now, the refrigerant issue did exist. There are multiple leaks on that evaporator coil, but I still don't think that um, the, the call was because of the refrigerant leaks. I really think that the customer having an energy management or internet controlled thermostats installed had something to do with the issue. Um, I Just because the charge wasn't that low, I think I stumbled onto a problem that would have become bigger later. But at this time, I don't think it was that big of a deal. Um, still I got multiple refrigerant leaks to fix and, or an evaporator coil to change. And that's a whole thing, man. I've been really thinking about that one and I don't know how I'm going to approach that. That's a head scratcher because changing that evaporator coil is going to take so many man hours. Um, it just getting it up there without anybody getting hurt or without damaging it and then getting it into that unit. It just seems like a nightmare. And because that unit is hanging on strut, you can't really take the corner posts apart of the unit um, because the strut is holding it up. Um, and once you start taking corner posts apart, the unit loses its whole structural integrity. Um, it's just a nightmare. I've been thinking about that one, man. Holy moly. So I think the best bet in this situation is, is to just give the customer all the information and see if they'll let me go in there and just start trying to fix leaks. There's no way we're going to get them all, but maybe we can slow down the leaks and repair it, you know, as best as possible. I mean, inevitably that evaporator is going to have to be replaced. Eventually you saw how much rust there was. Um, it's a whole thing, but big picture diagnosis as usual, you know, I started from scratch, uh, even though I saw oil, you know, I went upstairs and went through all the troubleshooting steps again, thinking through my head, Hey, is this evaporator fan motor running at full speed? Um, using my senses, listening to everything, I was able to say, okay, I could tell a, a huge distinction from when, it was on first stage cooling and running at low speed. And when it was on second stage cooling, you can hear the high pitch whistle go away. Um, so, you know, I, this really goes to uh, reinforce the whole don't wear headphones when you're working on these jobs because you got to be able to hear things. And, you know, knowing what's normal and what's not normal, um, recognizing this is the normal sound, this is not the normal sound. You know, uh, I just, I can't stress that enough wearing headphones, unless you're in a situation where you need ear protection, I strongly suggest that you don't wear headphones on these jobs, whether it be normal service, routine maintenance, no matter how redundant or mundane it is, you need to be able to hear things because your mind will recognize them and store them for later. Um, also, you know, big picture saying, Hey, this other unit's not running or Hey, the, you know, just walking by and running my hands across condenser fan motors that are running and noticing that the air is cold and it's not in heating mode. What's going on here. That other unit had electrical shorts. It was also showing the same fault code of short cycling. Um, you know, I'm, I brought that to the customer's attention and like I thought they didn't want to do anything about it as of yet, but I'm going to note that. And you know, when times start getting better, when the virus crap goes away, if it does ever, 
um, we're going to, you know, go and fix that other unit and repair the electrical shorts and then diagnose further from there. So um, keep in mind, I do live streams Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific, um, where I discuss these videos, talk about, answer questions, comments, all that stuff. So come check them out. I'd really appreciate it. Do me a favor. Uh, leave me a comment down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, would you done something differently? Uh, do you have a better way of changing that evaporator coil? You know, I'm always looking for feedback. Uh, you can send me an email to hvacrvideos at gmail.com. That's another method. Um, I really, really appreciate the communication from you guys. Just a, a comment saying, hey, you know, I liked this or hey, you know, I'd have done it like this. I, I love reading that stuff. So keep them coming. I really appreciate it. Um, also, I have uh, I, I pretty much have said it to everybody, but I have a new tool review channel. It's called HVACR Tools. There'll be a link in the show notes of this video. Check it out. Um, I've only got one video up on there, but there's going to be more coming soon. So other than that, guys, we will catch you guys on the next one. Okay.